Hello and welcome to my retro watches. This is the next episode in the uh, Seiko 6309 giveaway series, the 5,000 stroke 6,000 subscribers. Um, now then, this video, we are now going to assemble the um, calendar works and then we'll flip the movement over and we'll assemble the um, automatic framework. So the bit that makes the rotor wind the mainspring. I'll try and explain a little bit about how that works as we go along as well. Now, I do hope you enjoyed the fault finding video. Um, it was interesting to find the fault could well have been that uh, Dioshock jewel all along. Uh, I'm still hanging on the idea that it was other things as well, but <laughs> the reality is it quite possibly was that all along. So if you sat through all that for 30 minutes, you know, well done, because you found out at the end that it was me. <laughs> anyway, so the motion works, uh, sorry, the, the calendar works is, uh, usually looks quite horrific. And some people uh, over the, the time I've been doing this have explained to me that they, they fear a date and a day change mechanism because it looks like a really complicated idea but the reality is i find it um, not too difficult at all it does look a bit scary there's lots of different parts it's a little bit more forgiving um, so you know part placement and stuff is a bit easier there's nothing too tricky to um, get your head around uh, there's quite a bit of oiling to go on certainly in the keyless works uh, now there is one little caveat that i've got here that i'm only going to be using the mobius 9010 and I'm going to be using the Mobius D3 uh, for the high friction points. In some of the keyless areas you should really be using some type of grease and at the moment I don't know what that grease is. It's a question that I'm asking you guys really. Tell me the grease we should be using in the keyless works so I can try and obtain that for, for future. So right without further ado let's crack on and start the build. So the first part we're going to fit is going to be the um, clutch. Now the clutch does need some oil, uh, but I'm going to oil that on the microscope. I'm going to do the usual on and off the microscope so you can see things a little bit close up. Uh, but I've also found that to oil the clutch in situ in the movement is far easier than trying to do it uh, before you put it in. So here is the clutch. It has a sort of star or a geared end, which you can just make out there. And that is going to face the inside and it's just going to drop into there like so. Uh, and then we want to get the crown and the stem and feed that through uh, just so that it's sort of going to hold it in position. Now, uh, the next part that would need to be fitted is the, I've just noticed actually that the stem appears to be bent so i didn't notice that on the tear down of this uh quite a while ago so we'll have to do something about that um, so i will attempt to straighten that in a pin vise at some point so uh, as i was digressing we need to fit the setting lever as well and the setting lever has this very small pin now you might remember it in the original strip down video and because i'm going to go to the microscope i'm going to oil this and i'm going to oil the hole there so that um, is easy to fit. So over to the mic. Okay, so here we are on the microscope and you're looking at the clutch just there. And the service manual suggests to put some oil here. And that is because that's where the yoke is gonna sit. And then you want to just put a little bit on a few of the, the crown teeth there. Now, also, the, uh, the hole as I say and I'm just hopefully you can see that I'm just putting a little bit on the wall on the inside of the hole there so that's that bit of oiling complete we're going to go back on the bench and fit the setting lever so the setting lever little pin we need to place in the, the hole And usually I can do these straight away, but today, no. It is quite a small part. There. Okay, so that sits, as I say, into that hole. And then the setting lever itself, which I'm just trying to get hold of, 
is like this and it's got these two raised pins and they are facing up so you want to put the hole oh what am i saying first of all we also just need to put a tiny drop of oil on the top of that pin or on the side of that pin because the setting lever is a friction point so we drop that on there like so and that sits in there waiting for the yoke however it does need a few oiling points and they are on here on the side and just on the side of that there so once again i'm going to go over to the microscope so here we are looking at the setting lever now this is where if you do look at the service manual i believe it needs the grease rather than the oil and the grease is going to stay in place better and it's probably much easier to apply in a very small amount whereas oiling i'm still not perfect at so you want to put some on that and then we need a bit on this one and then on that contact face in there like so so back on to the bench where we're going to fit the yoke okay so the yoke is this long looking thing and this um, has to sit on the uh, pin here now it's a case of trying to line everything up with this so it needs to be resting in the clutch and hooked over hopefully you can see that that part of the setting lever that we just oiled uh, if it's not hooked over that then the mechanism isn't going to work and then you want to make sure it's in place and you will move there the spring like that so it's now held in place and so you can see it's held in place here the tweezers are making it uh, go blurry aren't they um, that is now in the clutch and engaged on the top there so the final part of the keyless works is the setting lever spring which is the last part to go on and we need to put that over that pin excuse me i'm getting it quite right here we go not going to be my night tonight i'm going to be dropping things there finally hit home <laughs> I do apologize I'm supposed to be uh, looking like I know what I'm doing here so there's there's one big screw and it always looks a bit odd because it's a big screw for what looks like a small hole and I've over the years doing these got this one mixed up many a time and the screw will need to go in that hole of which I'm a little bit hampered my usual excuse to be honest with you the uh, camera No, it really isn't having it, is it? Okay, with the power of editing, uh, that screw is now in place. I just need to tighten it up. Okay, and then I'll bring it up. So the uh, setting lever itself is not actually engaged with the pin that we oiled. This often happens for me. And I just used some pegwood. There we go. Clicked it over. And then you want to test it by moving the crown into its positions. And as you can see, they are all lining up wonderfully and perfectly. So it's now on with the next stage. So now all the keyless is in. We have to install the strangest of looking good parts, which is this one here. 
and this is called the uh, setting wheel lever uh, complete and it's quite a tricky thing to oil uh, if you read the manual it uh, doesn't it's a bit ambiguous for me so i will cut to the uh, microscope now and show you what i do which is probably not what you're supposed to do okay here we are looking at the setting wheel lever complete and i've stood it on its end uh, in rodico and if you're looking at the service manual and i suggest you do at this part and on the one i've uploaded in the link down below it's page three it's suggesting that uh, we oil in here in here and under there but for the life of me i have no idea how i'm supposed to oil in there without getting oil everywhere um, so again i'm sort of appealing to you guys uh, anyone out there who knows a little bit more uh, as to how uh, we are supposed to oil this and how we, i'm supposed to get it right so i'm just going to use some mobius 9010 and i've got a thin oiler and i'm just going to try and let it some of it trickle in it's quite difficult because of the angle i'm at as well it doesn't help um, and with a part like this I'm, you know, I don't think the oiling is going to affect the running too much. So a bit of, bit of guesswork really. As I say, if I just put some on the top there, it hopefully will run in the centre and I can dab it off a little bit with uh, Roddy Coat. So that's my best guess on that. I'm sorry it's not much help, um, but it's a really difficult part because it's all assembled. Um, and you know it does uh, move there's a lot of working parts there so anyway now we've oiled it as how i do it uh, let's fit it into the movement okay so now to fit the part is quite straightforward we just drop it in and the big hole is going to go over this post here he says like so and the what happens is the other part of the uh, setting lever, the other pin, if you like, it oiled, will sit in there and will move in this groove uh, when we're pulling the crown out. And all this is the mechanism for the driving of the a quick set of the day and the date. So now that is installed, we then have to fit the uh, minute wheel. Uh, I just need to oil the little point uh, there, or the little pivot that it sits on and that's quite straightforward right it's now time to just oil that um, bit that the minute wheel sits on and it's mobius 9010 for me on this and just a little bit on the side like that nothing too special so let's fit the minute wheel so here's the minute wheel and let me just try and get my hand in the way it's got a little gear that sits on the top and that must face up and all you're going to do is drop that down onto the bit we've just oiled and be sure that it's meshed with the cannon pinion gear there it should quite straightforward and easily uh, but always just double check because if it doesn't uh, the thing's going to have a bit of a problem later on when you try and set the uh, the time okay now with the uh, minute wheel fitted it's time to assemble the other gears and then the uh, minute wheel before we put on the last part which was the minute wheel bridge so there is a method you have to do it this way if you try and put the minute wheel bridge on now it, you'll find that it fails later on you won't be able to get the hour wheel on so um, we have some of the little nylon parts so we have this intermediate intermediate wheel and it has as always it doesn't want to focus but there is there is that's why you can't see it on the other side it has two gears oops and that is going to be fitting in there and i've just realized that first of all i need to put the uh the date wheel finger wheel on which is this nylon one like so also and then we'll go back to the intermediate wheel turn it over and sit it on its post 
because these are nylon or plastic parts they don't need to be oiled um, I believe plastic parts are classed as self oiling interestingly enough the next part is the um, date driving wheel and this has well it has to go this side up it's got a little recess in the hole and it has to fit in a certain way so I'll just fit it first of all and then show you okay so before I put the screw in there is a little notch here and this has to be that this side of it basically uh, for it to um, engage now what these wheels are doing basically is when these are in charge of changing the day and the date uh, when the watch gets to 12 so it's nothing to do with the quick set this is just a natural progression so it goes around with the um, the train of wheels here the hour wheel and the minute wheel and when these get to a specific point they will the teeth on it grip onto the teeth of the date wheel and click it over and likewise sorry with the uh, the uh, the date uh, sorry the date i get them all mixed up <laughs> the, the day wheel all right so that's those two installed and then it has a little uh, screw to hold it all in place and hence the reason why you need to make sure that the recess is at the top so i'll just screw that in okay and we just want to make sure that it i haven't gripped it so okay that's in that's good and on with the next part the next part will be the hour wheel and the hour wheel looks like that and that's going to fit over the uh, cannon pinion and what am i talking about i do need to put just a little bit of mobius d3 now i'm not going to cut to the microscope on this one because it's just a little drop just on the side of the cannon pinion and again it's just because it's a friction point and a little bit of lubrication will uh, help uh, help with uh, keeping the wear down at bay so that will now fit over the top and it should then mesh uh, what, what I'm now finding actually which I forgot to say is the setting there we go hopefully you, you noticed that the um, date wheel finger here needed to be moved around or else it wouldn't sit flat so now that's fl sitting flat it should have meshed with all of the relevant gears and we can't test that unfortunately just yet but what we need to bring in is the minute wheel bridge which is this and that will then fit like so and we've also got a screw to hold that in place quite a small screw so i'll just tighten that one and it doesn't want to go in And I'm not going to edit it out this time. You can see my my fault. There we go. Right. So now we're getting somewhere. Most of it is complete. Now what I can do is I can start to try and turn the wheels a little bit because as long as they're sitting flat they should mess sometimes the intermediate wheel will come out and what you want to be feeling for here is that everything is really really smooth so this the um, I'm turning the crown everything feels uh, easy it's not really really loose that I'd be concerned and it's certainly not tight and that just means that um, well one things are oiled correctly and lubricated well uh, but you are looking to feel if it feels tight for instance so if it felt really really tight and you couldn't turn the wheels perhaps you've got a meshing issue um, but it also could mean the cannon pinion is too tight and that will 
basically impede everything and cause excessive wear, certainly when you're trying to set the time. Uh, there are ways to uh, open um, can of pinions out by removing them and putting a small smoothing brooch inside and turning them. Uh, likewise, if this is so, so loose, um, what caused, well, what, uh, what creates, sorry, the symptoms of that is if you built the whole watch, the crown was really loose, the hands are really, really loose. And, um, you find it's they're so so sensitive and that again is the opposite it's just the can pinion is too loose and then you'd need to tighten it and tighten them is not easy it's a simple procedure but you have to uh, approach it with some care you would need to try and put something in the hole of the can pinion for instance i use an old oiler and then you just want to try and crimp it on one side with a crimping tool or even a pair of wire cutters something like that and you're only doing it ever so slight uh, just put a little notch into it and then that should grip and then tighten things up. But in this instance, uh, we are pretty much good to go. Right, the next part is the date jumper. And that looks like that. And that fits down here. Now, it fits on one small post. And then you would need to, to move the... Um, spring part into position to take the pressure and you also want to oil ever so slightly just this flat edge here it just helps with the um, date ring it also says to do that in the manual so once again i'm going to cut to the uh, microscope and i'll have a quick look at that okay so here is the uh, jumper itself uh, it does look like it's dirty but that is just stains to the steel uh, obviously <laughs> you saw the cleaning video so it's definitely clean now I'm just going to try and see if I can set it in position under the scope uh, so that you get an understanding. Um, so I'm just going to hold it down with a bit of pegwood and you would just literally clip that under there. Uh, it's not under much load at the moment but when the date um, wheel is going round this is the, the sort of click if you like that holds it in position. So I will just undo the uh, pressure a little bit and I'm going to use some 9010 on the just making sure that you guys are in focus because it's the usual thing with my eyes so there we go there's a little bit there and then what it isn't doesn't say in the manual but what i tend to do because i've seen it done by other people is to just put I've got too much oil on there I put a little bit of um, D3 where that would go that's too much and that will run and run and run it's too close to the escape for me so I'm just going to get some roddy coat scoop up as much of that as I can so there we go so you're seeing now that we didn't really want that to happen did we so I'm not going to edit this out and make myself look like a complete professional because um, I'm not so again I will just load this in it doesn't doesn't feel like it's got much force on it. Some of them are, are, are much worse than others. Um, there is a thought in my mind at the moment that this could look a little bit bent actually, uh, but we'll see, we'll fit the um, date wheel and see if it works. So now it is time to fit the date wheel or date ring and you need to position it fairly carefully. So it's lining up and then the setting spring that you've just oiled you just want to move it with the tweezers like that so that it engages with one of the teeth and then that is the date wheel uh, installed but you have to be pretty careful now because you can knock that quite easily and knocking it will make it um, spring back out so it's now time to install the protective cover plates 
and then we're vastly approaching the end of the calendar works. So here's the first cover plate and the big hole in it, line it up with the um, die shop jewel. And it does have a few little location pins. And so once you're happy with that, you have to bring in the screws and the screws on these are a pain, really small. So I'm using my yellow uh, screwdriver. And as I go around, I may as well uh, keep talking. So, um, I don't normally try and uh, self-advertise or um, try and promote anything particularly guys but um, I do have a affiliate link to my tools um, so I've got a website uh, myretrowatches.com and on there there's a page uh, all about uh, the tools tools that I use or tools that I recommend uh, like the ultrasonic for instance and I get a little bit of a kickback from that it is uh, Amazon affiliates uh, but all I've tried to do is just take the pain away uh, for any of you guys trying to start. You know, you can buy lots of tools at the beginning, lots of cheap stuff, and it doesn't work, or you, you're not too sure what you should be buying. So all I've tried to do is put everything on one page, certainly to get you started. Um, so you can look at that, you can read my little reviews. And if you want to buy, of course you can buy. And as I say, I do get a little bit back from that. And I have to say it's not much, but everything helps, certainly helps me uh, to try and improve this channel, uh, buy more uh, watches to uh, video, things like that really. They do take uh, a lot of my time to make these videos for you. I'm not doing it for money, I do have a, a profession and a day job. Uh, however, it is nice to get a little bit of, um, as I say, a bit of kickback for the, the hard work that I get. Equally, I've, um, I've made at the request of some of you, uh, some My Retro Watches t-shirts. And there is a link, again, below, that you can buy, should you wish, uh, one of my t-shirts. And they will be shipped all the way around the world. And likewise with the Amazon affiliate links, actually. I'm not having much luck with this screw while I'm talking. Uh, the Amazon affiliate links are sort of a UK, America, Canada, and Spain at the moment. So those are sort of regional Amazons and if one of those is near you then obviously it makes it a bit easier So there we go. I've done my bit of promotion Always feel a bit awkward about that, but you know, why not? So that's the first uh, cover plate on and then we've got the second one Which is going over here And I just have to remember now myself And I've got a little friend look little fly So I can see how this goes, and I've got a bit of a reflection from my side. There we go. So we have one screw. And that is the guard's home. And then you can now try to check the function. So there we go. And if you so wish, you could wind it through 12. So let's try and do that because then you can see how the, um, the finger controls that part of the mechanism. So it's just clicked over and that's because it's the one underneath and the one on the top is for the uh, day wheel so there we go so i'm just going to turn that around into position because it's the day wheel that we have to fit next so here is the day wheel and 
what I'm doing is I'm just turning this to face me because this little spring here is what engages with this star gear underneath. So you want to lie it on like so and then find a, I tend to find a suitable oiler, uh, an old one or at least a clean one that I can then poke through the hole, move that lever so that it engages with the star gear like so. Once it's done, the last thing to fit is the C-clip. Now, this is never going to show on film, I'd be surprised. Uh, it's got one side that's chamfered, which is that side. So you just see the edge, it's got a chamfer. A lot of people put that down that way, and that's a big no-no because you can never get it off again. You need to put it so the chamfer's down. The chamfer's there, so you've, it gives you something to lever on when you come to service or repair the watch. So I'm just going to fit that over the top, put my tweezers either side. I'm not forcing it particularly, just pushing it down. And then there we are, that is the, um, the date wheel and the day wheel installed. All right, all we have to do, we don't have to do anything really now, but is just to check it. Uh, so look that it's sitting flat, which it seems to be. Uh, pull the crown. There we go. So that's turning nicely. And so is that. And then if you so desired, and it's a good practice too now, is to turn this through all the way. Which is going to be a while <laughs> to make sure that the... Here we go. So make sure it's going to change like so. So there we have it guys, that is uh, a Seiko 6309 calendar works assembled. Um, so hopefully that's been done as clear and as concise as possible. Um, as I say, we're just gonna fit the uh, automatic framework onto the backside, uh, which I'll do in just a moment. And then that is it. Uh, the mechanics side of this restoration for this giveaway is then complete and it will be on then to the uh, restoration of the case. So I'm just gonna get set up and then we'll start doing the automatic framework. Right, I've turned the movement over and set it up in preparation. And first of all, we need to move it out of the way and bring in this part. So this is the automatic framework part and I removed the, what's called the paw levers or the magic fingers, which are these and then it needs also its cover plate or its protective shroud if you like which is that part there so we need to marry all these up into the right place uh, and then do some necessary oiling on the microscope okay so we need to take the pull lever and rest it in its post take this little plastic shroud and sort of line that corner up. Well, you can't really see, it's going blurry, isn't it? So line that corner up there. And then over here. Okay, now that is uh, in its correct position. We're just gonna to cut to the microscope and I'll show you the places that I oil. So you're looking at the uh, the centre jewel there on the pole, and you need to oil. Oh, I'm using some uh, Mobius D3, and you want to just get some into there. Now it tells you not to try and oil the uh, top. So now that is in place. We will just move it across a bit so you can see the next part because there, these are the the arms and the teeth which will grip a um, driving wheel and the, the tip of those again needs some Mobius 
Now obviously these are in constant use with your movement of your arm. Uh, it's what winds the gear that goes in here, which then winds the ratchet, which then winds the mainspring. So it's all really important. Uh, so high friction areas, as I say. So there we go. That is now oiled and we can go back to the watch and put it on. We now also have to install the, the gear, which is called the transmission wheel. And um, rather than go back onto the scope, the jewel that you just see here, again, just a small amount on the jewel itself uh, of uh, Mobius D3. Um, so here is the wheel. And as you can see, it's got a driving gear on the bottom and that needs to engage with the ratchet wheel which it does like so so once that is in position you can then bring in the um the framework and you just drop that on and line it up with the screw holes And then, before I start tightening, I just need to make sure that the pull levers are then engaged with that wheel. And you do that like so. And then you can get it here, and just push the other one and make sure that it's true and good. Once you're happy with that, get the screws in place. Which I'll just try and do as quickly as I can now for you. So definitely going to be interested to hear your comments uh, on this. Um, the assembly of, of the calendar works and just the general this watch in in general really you know how do you think I'm doing on the restoration so far are you looking forward to the casework videos, which are going to be quite tricky for me to do. Uh, have you learned anything? Um, anything like that? Any good feedback, bad feedback? I'm all for it. Uh, as I like to keep saying, you know, I am just a hobbyist. And to be honest with you, um, I, I'm intending perhaps to do a video at some point of um, my journey into this hobby and how long I've actually been doing it for. Because to be honest, it's not long. I'm, I've kind of lost count, but from servicing my first watch to now, we're probably only something like two and a half years. Um, admittedly, I've got really obsessed and done lots and lots of them. And I did some case restorations before I ever picked up the tools to do a movement. Uh, so it'd been interesting perhaps to um, document that in a video so you can sort of see my journey and, and how my passions become uh, into this uh, this hobby. Anyway, the train wheel is uh, the, the train wheels. It's not the train wheels at all, is it? It's the automatic framework that is now installed. And you can check by just trying to put a little bit of wind onto the mainspring. Um, this is gonna, I don't think I can film. Maybe I can if I hold it at an angle. So if I try to wind that a little bit, we should hear and see that the gear is going round the transmission wheel. It's going around nice and freely and nothing's binding. So I am happy now that the um, the main part has been done. Now we will need to oil the bearings, but I won't do that until I put the uh, rotor on and I'm not going to put the rotor on till the end. There is also a plastic shroud, which is here which will need to go around the movement as well when we come to case it. But for the time being, I'm going to leave it like this. Um, and the next video, which is going to come very soon, I'll do a, hopefully try and do a quick video on the dial itself, because we all know that the dial looked a bit ropey, didn't it? But it was covered in dust and things like that. So I'm going to try and clean that up as best I can. Perhaps it should have been the very first thing I did before I did any of the mechanics because the dial on a watch is absolutely everything. But we'll see. Hopefully it cleans up uh, pretty well. 
Uh, and then if I've got some time as well, then perhaps I'll film uh, looming the hands. And then we're done. It's just over into trying to do the case, uh, the restoration of all of the cases to, to as good as I can get it, let's face it. And then uh, we'll put a new crystal into it. I'll show you how I can buy a crystal, how I do that. Um, we'll choose a strap and then of course we can give it away. So that's it guys, we're at the end of the video. Um, I have no idea whether this is another long one or a short one, <laughs> uh, but it is what it is. So, you know, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for your patience of getting to the end. Again, I really do hope you've, in, you've enjoyed it and you've learned something from it and you're learning from my channel as it's growing. Uh, you know, give me a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, leave as many comments as you possibly can because I love it and I read them all and I want to try and speak to as many of you as I can. And of course, uh, why not visit my website, uh, myretrowatches.com um, and of course join the Facebook group Retro and Vintage Watches and Restorations. So there's plenty of links down below. Check those all out and I will catch you very soon in the next video. Bye for now.